Last week, we got your attention with the word bacon. So we're going to try it again today. Here's your weekly constitutional with part two of Bacon's Castle. Uh, I feel like we should do that thing on... Remember last Sunday morning That's when right. Stuart started talking right. about this place in Virginia that maybe some of you visited. I'd never even heard of it. I'm just being completely honest. It's called Bacon's Castle. This is Stuart Harris. He's professor of law at Appalachian School of Grun uh, Law in Grundy, Virginia, and host of your weekly constitutional, which I need to remind folks and remind myself is produced locally at yeah, WETS. WETS, right. But it's heard all over. I heard on your radio show people are calling in from all over the country. Yes, they are. Yeah, we're, we're broadcasting now from New York to Texas. And of course, we're available on iTunes. We get downloads all over the world. Congratulations. Thank you. On that. And, and I think you've got listeners because you choose fascinating topics. And last week, we started talking about Bacon's Castle, this place near Williamsburg, Virginia. Yes. First, take us there geographically. Am I right? Near yes. Williamsburg? It's just south of Williamsburg, right across the James River from Jamestown. So you're driving up. What are you seeing? Is it a castle? It, it's, it doesn't look exactly like a castle. It's actually called Late Jacobean architecture. It looks like an English manor house, and it was specifically designed to imitate those English manor houses. It was built in 1665, I believe it was, so I think we're on the 350th anniversary of it this year. And it was a place that was one of the grand houses that was taken over during an event that most of us have never heard of called Bacon's Rebellion. Mm -hmm. Bacon's Rebellion was a rebellion against the English governor by a fellow named Nathaniel Bacon, who was angry with the way the governor was running the colony and who ended up burning down the entire <laughs> capital city of, of Jamestown. Of Jamestown. He burned it. So what we are seeing when we visit now is, is the way it was prior to the destruction of the city? Yes, well, it's it's been w remarkably well preserved. And now. I mean by Jamestown, sure. prior to the to his right. destruction. Jamestown, the castle's fine though, right? The well, it's it's a big manor house and it looks it's really interesting because it doesn't look really look like a castle. Mm -hmm. But when you get close to it, you can tell how old it is. I mean, you, Williamsburg is 1770s old, right? So is Yorktown a little bit earlier than that. This is like 1665. It's crumbling. It looks like an old English manor house. And it's you can tour it? You can tour it. You can tour it. I think they open up in March every year and they go through late fall. It's a fascinating place. It's fascinating architecturally. It's fascinating historically. And it's something I had never heard of until recently. You've made me want to go. Absolutely. Uh, and I know it is open to the public, so they want you to go. Yes. Uh, what happened to Bacon? Bacon didn't do very well. He, <laughs> you know, you Despite burned, his best efforts, You burned right? the capital to the ground. Uh, you, you would think he ended up getting hanged, and I think he was on his way to the gallows, but then he decided to take the easy way out. He got sick and he died. It was uh, often an option for folks in the country at that time. I think it, was it really likely. was. Um, I, I appreciate the, the information about this and the chance to go back to it again, because right. this is part two. Right. Uh, your, your weekly constitutional airs Sunday at 3 and Tuesday at 8. Uh, Stuart Harris is the host. He's also a professor of law and a, a, a very good friend of ours, and he comes back and helps us out a lot of times. So thank you, Stuart. We Absolutely. appreciate it.